Well, I wanted to share an archaeological discovery in Jerusalem that was pretty interesting. And it was a biblical chamber identified in Jerusalem. A lavish reception hall sheds light on Jerusalem's ruling class. And this was by Merrick Dospil, April 10th, 2024. And this was an excavation that looks like it is in the southeast quadrant across from the Temple Mount. Iron Age, Jerusalem's administrative district just south of the ancient Temple Mount, located in the area of the ongoing Gavadi parking lot excavations, included a magnificent elite residence. And it shows the residence with the arrow in this picture, Yair Z, courtesy of the City of David archive. The magnificent structure recently excavated in the City of David was unique in Jerusalem's ancient landscape during the closing centuries of the Iron Age. Now that's when King David lived. Destroyed most likely during the Babylonian capture of Jerusalem in 586 BCE that marked the end of the First Temple period. This large public building reflects the daily life of Jerusalem's ruling elite. But what exactly was its purpose? Could it have been an example of a chamber that the Hebrew Bible often associates with Jerusalem's priests and senior officials in 2 Kings 23.11 and Jeremiah 35, 2-5? That would be the Sanhedrin, probably. Co-directors of the current Gavadi parking lot excavations, Israeli archaeologists Yuval Gadot and Yifta Shalev, present their latest findings about Building 100. In the spring 2014 issue of Biblical Archaeology Review, their article, Lifestyles of Jerusalem's Rich and Famous, offers a first-hand account of the building and its possible functions. A complementing article by really Avasar, published in the same issue, introduces one specific and rare type of artifact recovered from the building titled Fragments of Luxury, the Jerusalem Ivories. It explores the hundreds of fragments of ivories found in Building 100 and what they reveal about Jerusalem's wealthiest residents. To fully appreciate the new discovery, we need to recognize that Jerusalem of the 7th and early 6th centuries BCE was a prosperous city. The bustling capital of the Kingdom of Judah, Jerusalem was well connected to the larger Near East. Its administrative district in the city of David, just south of the ancient Temple Mount, hosted the royal palace and other official state institutions, including a magnificent residence and reception hall, Building 100, located on the northwestern slope of the southeastern ridge. Building 100 is one of the largest structures known from Iron Age Jerusalem. Only three ground floor rooms are preserved of the two-story building. And this drawing is by Mikhail Kaplan. Fine architectural features, preserved decoration, and recovered artifacts all attest to the uniqueness of Building 100. Most impressive was a thick terrazzo-style plaster floor that adorned at least part of the building's second story, write Gadot and Shalev. The floor was made of a base of coarse limestone fragments topped by a thick layer of well-sifted sediment and calcite crystals. Its hardened surface was polished to create a smooth, reddish, shimmering floor. And this is the first time such a floor has ever been found in Iron Age Israel. Also reflecting the building's splendor is a rich collection of bulla and seals that indicate the presence of the personal or administrative archive of a high official. The rich assemblance of tableware 
discovered smashed on the floor of one of the ground floor rooms included a set of fine drinking vessels suited for banquets, receptions, and official ceremonies. The ivory fragments found in Building 100 most likely belonged to plaques used as inlays to decorate luxury furniture. And this photo of the ivory inlay is by Sasha Fleet. Most indicative of the building's grandeur, however, is the assemblage of decorated ivory plaques, which most likely served as decorative inlays attached to luxury furniture. These ivories are similar to those found at other royal capitals of the Iron Age Near East, including Assyria, Nimrud, and Israelite Samaria. In fact, Assyrian reliefs offer instructive depictions of furniture decorated with inlaid ivory plaques. Whether made locally or imported from Assyria, the ivory plaques from Building 100 show that Jerusalem was well connected to the wider region during the late Iron Age, writes Reli Avasar. Its wealthiest residents were well versed in the fashions of the day and benefited from the trade and movement of high-end luxury goods, materials, and craftsmen that were supported through the Assyrian Empire. Although we still don't know when Building 100 was first built, we do know it was violently destroyed. And I can kind of show you where that happened because I'm going to share some scriptures with you. Throughout the building, we found the collapsed walls and floors of the upper story along with charred wood and burnt debris caused by a great fire that engulfed the building. The pottery from the collapse, together with radiocarbon and um, archaeomagnetic data, all confirm the site was destroyed in the early 6th century, most likely during the Babylonian destruction of Jerusalem in 586 BCE that marked the end of the First Temple period. To further explore the unprecedented Building 100 and how it may be identified with the Biblical Chamber, read Yuval Gadot and Yifta Shalev's article, Lifestyles of Jerusalem's Rich and Famous, and Reli Avasar's accompanying article, Fragments of Luxury, the Jerusalem Ivories, both published in the spring 2024 issue of Biblical Archaeology Review. Ivory Riches from the First Temple Jerusalem, for the first time, a collection of ivory plaques has been discovered in Jerusalem dating to the First Temple period. The so it was King Solomon that had Hiram of Tyre, who was, you know, the chief craftsman. He went, he had a fleet of ships, a navy, and he sent his navy out to gather gold and silver and ivory and exotic things. And we see this in Second Chronicles 9.21 that says, For the king's ships went to Tarshish with the servants of Hiram, and every three years once came the ships of Tarshish, bringing gold and silver, ivory and apes and peacocks. And we see this again in 1 Kings 10.22. For the king had at sea a navy of Tarshish with the navy of Hiram. Once in three years came the navy of Tarshish, bringing gold and silver, ivory and apes and peacocks. And then we also see this about King Ahab in 1 Kings 22.39. Now the rest of the acts of Ahab and all that he did and the ivory house which he made and all the cities that he built, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? But if we go back to 1 Kings 10 verse 18, it says, Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with the best gold. And then in Psalm 45, we see in verse 6, it says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. All thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia. 
out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. King's daughters were among thy honorable women upon thy right hand, did stand the queen in gold of Ophir. And here in Revelation 18, we see another indication that Jerusalem is Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots. And we see this talking about their ivory here in verse 11 and 12. It's in verse 12. And it says, And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and pearls, fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thine wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour. These were all things that were in the temple and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. So right there, all manner of vessels of ivory. And this is what Hiram of Tyre brought to Jerusalem with his navy for King Solomon and all the building that King Solomon did during the Iron Age, during the first temple period. And this ivory that they found dates to the Iron Age, to the time of King Solomon and King David. They lived during the Iron Age. So here's when this was destroyed, because it's in Amos 3, and it says, Witness against Israel. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family, which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Will a lion roar in the forest when he hath no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he hath taken nothing? Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no gin is for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord hath not done it? Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants the prophets." The lion hath roared, who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken, who can but prophesy? Publish in the palaces at Ashdod and in the palaces in the land of Egypt and say, assemble yourselves upon the mountains of Samaria and behold the great tumults in the midst thereof and the oppressed in the midst thereof. For they know not to do right, saith the Lord, who store up violence and robbery in their palaces. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, an adversary there shall be even round about the land, and he shall bring down thy strength from thee, and thy palaces shall be spoiled. Thus saith the Lord, as the shepherd taketh out the mouth of the lion two legs or a piece of an ear, so shall the children of Israel be taken out that dwell in Samaria in the corner of a bed and in Damascus in a couch. Hear ye and testify in the house of Jacob, says the Lord God, the Lord of hosts, that in the day that I shall visit the transgressions of Israel upon him, I will also visit the altars of Bethel, and the home of the altar shall be cut off and fall to the ground. And I will smite the winter house with the summer house, and the houses of ivory shall perish, and the great houses shall have an end, saith the Lord. So that destruction of those ivory houses came in the book of Amos in chapter 3, verse 15. And the houses of ivory shall perish, and the great houses shall have an end, saith the Lord. And it came to pass, and now they're unearthing all of this ivory inlay that was on the walls in this grand residence hall. So for the first time, they're finding these ivory fragments, you know, this inlay work with the ivory, which shows that it was Jerusalem and that it reiterates that Jerusalem is the scarlet harlot 
Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots in the book of Revelation because they had these ivory palaces. And Solomon and Hiram commissioned to have all of this ivory and exotic, you know, wood and everything brought to Jerusalem for the building of his palace and the temple and his own throne was made of ivory. So this is really a stunning archeological discovery and find. And I hope you enjoy seeing a couple of the pictures of the ivory that they've discovered. So I was putting this together with, um, you know, the scriptures showing you how these things came to an end in the historical record in the Bible, because they didn't mention anything about the Bible in the article other than that it dated to the Iron Age. And that's when David and Solomon were kings. And this is when they brought all of the exotic woods and pearls and, you know, exotic fabrics and dyes into Jerusalem to um, adorn their royal highnesses. And then eventually uh, the greed took over and God got angry about that they were not helping the poor, the widows, and the fatherless. So, uh, you know, being treated shabbily by them. It was kind of like, um, you know, when the kings had gather their wealth and everything and then they subdue the little guy. Kind of like what's happening to us with the food prices and, you know, those in elite positions that have billions of dollars, you know, trying to um, make sure that we can't have steak anymore or roast beef, you know, and that that's what they're going to be feasting on while we feast on whatever they want us to eat, which we're not going to do. But this is the same thing that was going on before God destroyed their monarchy and brought an end to it by bringing a sword against it. So all of their ivory, thionine wood, everything that they brought to enrich themselves came to destruction. And let that be a lesson for the future because God will not put up with that there. And uh, this truly is really interesting history in the Bible of how it came to an end and how the Lord put an end to the winter and summer houses that were adorned with ivory. Really fantastic discovery right there in Jerusalem during a time when things are kind of strange and odd going on there. Um, and as far as the red heifer, I wanted to tell you that they don't have to get permission to do that red heifer ceremony because the man, the Jewish man owns the land on the Mount of Olives and they can do it anytime they want. They don't have to get permission from the government. I hope you found this very interesting. It's really um, an interesting story that I wanted to bring to you. And please uh, give a thumbs up to get the algorithms going. I have a lot of problems with the hindrance of views on YouTube. If you'd like to support the work on this channel and help me, as you know my situation, um, it's paypal.me forward slash K-K-R-O-C-O-C-O -O -O, or Kimberly K. Ballard, P.O. Box 246, Niwot, N-I-W-O-T, Colorado is C-O, 80544. And my book, The Almond Tree, Aaron's Rod, The Messiah, King of Israel, OlivePressPublisher.com and other bookstores online but that's the best place and where you really should get it is at the publisher so i will talk to you soon i thought this was really um something that was kind of an overlooked discovery and pray for the peace of jerusalem everything that's happening is so crazy and it seems like they're kind of delaying things because of the incidents going on you know the enemy is trying to prevent Jesus from coming back, so they're trying to delay everything. So keep your eyes on the sky, keep watching, particularly on Passover night, the night of watching for the redemption, and I'll see you later. Have a blessed night. Sleep tight and don't let the bed bugs bite. <laughs>
I'll see you guys. Bye.